I've been toying with making a switch from Apple to Android for a while now, and I've been really curious if the grass truly is greener on the other side. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com, and I recently had a chance to get one of these. It's the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. As you can see, it's a really cool looking phone, but I wanted to spend several weeks really living with it as my own phone, using everything from email to text messaging, taking pictures and downloading a whole bunch of new apps to see if it really is a better experience. The Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, shown here in shiny midnight black, is definitely slim and sleek. It fits easily in one hand and has that dramatic edge-to-edge -edge design that allows the screen to take up more real estate on the front of the phone. The screen's colorful, vibrant, and easy to read, and for that you can thank the 6.2-inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display with 529 pixels per inch. Getting the new Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus set up was super easy. Of course, you can set it up as a brand new device from scratch, or you can transfer your old data from an older Android phone or even from an Apple phone. The Galaxy S8 Plus makes it super easy and it'll walk you through everything step by step. Even so, if you've got questions, I wrote a blog at techgadgetscanada.com called Switching from Apple to Android Samsung, Things You Need to Know Before You Make the Switch. You'll want to check that out if you still have questions. I found the battery life on this device excellent. After a full eight hour workday and then activities and tasks well into the evening, I was still able to head off to bed with about 30 or 40% battery remaining. During my review period, I used Samsung's native email app and I have to say, I didn't love it. It was easy to get different email accounts set up and to manage them, but I didn't like the main inbox screen and didn't find it indicated clearly enough which emails were new and which were previously read. By contrast, in Apple's mail app, seen here on the right, there's a large blue dot to the left of each email to indicate it's unread. It's vibrant and easy to see at a glance. Samsung's, by comparison, uses a much smaller and more subtly colored dot, and once read, the dot changes from a medium blue to a light blue. I personally found it hard to see this clearly, and I was unable to find any settings in the phone that could customize or improve the mail app beyond this. If any of you out there have any tips, please let me know in comments. I often found with the Galaxy S8 Plus that there were extra taps or extra steps required to do some things. Case in point was using the lock screen. You put in your password, but you still have to put in the OK button before it'll take you to your screen. With some other phones I've tried, yes, OK, it's my old Apple iPhone. You put in the passcode and it'll just unlock it. There's no need for that extra OK button. So this is just kind of a little extra step, but that's not the only one I found. Searching stuff on the Galaxy S8 Plus, it's necessary to tap into the search window before a keyboard will appear for you. With other phones, as soon as you enter that search function, the keyboard pops up automatically. Long text messages don't display fully in the text window. You'll get a couple centimeters of message and then a prompt at the bottom that says view all. Yet another click, which to me anyway, is unnecessary. So I realize we're talking about split seconds and single clicks here. Is this enough to make the user experience a lot worse than other phones? The answer is no. It's just a bit of a different way that the phone operates. If you've read any of my previous blogs about the Samsung Galaxy S8 devices, I've raved about the camera. And after a month of steady use, my feelings have not changed. If anything, I'm more in love with the camera on this device than ever before. The pictures just seem more vibrant and intense. The filters, the settings, and the options with the camera are just a lot more fun. A really great feature I found is that when recording video, the display will show you how much total video time you have left to record. This is super handy so I can keep an eye on how much memory I have left and how much time I can record. One of my favorite features is selective focus. It works on both the front and the rear camera and allows you to highlight an area within about 50 centimeters of the lens. The camera will focus on that particular spot and blur out the background for professional looking photos. Somewhat amazingly, you can also adjust this type of photo once you've taken it so the foreground will be out of focus and the background sharp if you've changed your mind about what you want. Overall, I really love the photo quality with the Galaxy S8 Plus. I find the photos more vibrant, sharper, and with the wide angle lens I get more stuff into the pictures. There are a lot of different ways to access the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. You can use a traditional passcode, you can use a pattern, um, facial recognition of course, an iris scan, even facial recognition. So there's a lot of ways to get into the phone. You can use whichever one you prefer. Now this is the point where I'm going to join legions of other people and complain about the placement of the fingerprint scanner. It's here on the back, it's up next to the camera. And the way I normally hold my phone it's just impossible to reach. It's not in a natural spot. You've kind of got to fiddle for it and find it. And really you're constantly smudging the camera screen while you're doing that. 
So hopefully in the next generation of Samsung Galaxy, the fingerprint scanner will be located perhaps more sensibly on the front of the phone. One thing that didn't occur to me when I made the switch from Apple to Android Samsung is how much it would affect my communication with family and friends. I would say that after doing a bit of a count in my head, about nine out of 10 of my family members have iPhones. At work, I would say six out of six of my immediate coworkers on my team have iPhones. So having been the only one to switch over to Android, I found I was getting left out of a lot of conversations. So group conversations, group chats, where in the Apple world, you can see what's going on, you can see who's weighing in. Once I've made that switch to Android, I can see the initial message, but then I'm left out of the rest of the group chat. So take a poll of your family, friends, coworkers, that kind of thing, and really ask yourself if you're going to be able to sort of be left out of a lot of those circles potentially. Now, if your friends and family and coworkers are all in the Android ecosystem and you're making that switch, you're gonna be good to go. Overall, I really, really liked the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. It's a super small phone, it's thin, it's light. I love the edge to edge screen. Watching videos and just doing any tasks on the phone are super enjoyable because the screen is just really great to look at, to watch. The bulk of my nitpicky complaints about the phone, I think have a lot more to do with me needing to adapt, to go from that Apple world into the Android ecosystem and just relearn how to do a bunch of things. It's not about the phone not working or not being responsive or not being a good product. It's more about my needing to adapt. The Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus is available from a variety of cell phone carriers across Canada. And of course, depending on which plan you get, it's available at a variety of price points. Thanks so much for watching this video. I've got a lot more detail in an article, actually a couple of articles online at techgadgetscanada.com that you can go and check out and read more about my experiences moving from that Apple to the Samsung to the Android world. I hope you'll go and check them out. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget, until the next time, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Aaron L Y Y C.